Hello, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I am a tech advocate with Cisco Learning and Certifications. Hey, everyone. My name is Matt DiNapoli. I am a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Welcome to episode 66 of DevNet Snack Minute. DevNet Snack Minute is your weekly 10-minute all things DevNet, where we talk about coding, APIs, or just some cool stuff you'd like to know. The cool thing that we're going to talk to you about today is GitLab with our guest, Allison Butler. Allison, do you mind introducing yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, so my name is Allison Butler. I am an automation architect on the DevNet Sandbox team. Um, and I'm here to talk about some of the cool projects that we have going on right now using GitLab um, for automation around sandbox builds. You know, it's the really, sandbox is not cool enough. Yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah I'm excited automation. for this one because <laughs> yeah. we talk about automation and programmability and probably people are like, yeah, whatever, they don't actually do it in DevNet. We do actually do it in DevNet. And actually, uh, because of the work that Allison has been doing and um, the rest of the team, they've really been adding a lot of cool automation behind the scenes to make those sandboxes run um, all the better. So we're going to see a little bit of taste of that today, right, Allison? Yeah. So I have a couple of things, I think, to show. Um, so one of the projects that we're working on, um, we're a pretty small team right now. We're like under 10 people and we do all of like the data center management as well as like building all of the sandboxes that are available. Um, so there's a lot of like busy work, right? Like creating VMs, installing OSs, configuring stuff. Um, so one of the things that we're working on right now is getting all of that stuff moved to Terraform. Um, so rather than oh, having somebody nice. go through and build up the VMs like by hand, we just have a Terraform script that um, does it all for you. So the one that I'm showing here is a Kubernetes cluster build. Um, Kubernetes is notorious for being a pain to spin up because you have like <laughs> each node and you have to install stuff on each node and configure each node and join them all. And it's, it's a mess. Um, so this is a Terraform module. Um, I've redacted some things so that you can't see what's going on behind the scenes. <laughs> um, but basically, we're using GitLab in two ways for this one. Um, so for one, we're storing all of our backend information in the Terraform registry um, in GitLab. So we're storing, there's nothing in here right now, but we can see we're using this to store our Terraform states. Um, so this means that we can collaborate using Terraform across the team. One of the big issues with Terraforms is managing state files. If you have them all locally, then if I push something and somebody else on my team pushes something, it'll break. Their changes will break my Terraform state. So we have it all centralized in GitLab. So that's one of the ways we're using it. And this one is a module development. So I'm actually also using the Terraform module registry rather than just like having the Terraform. So I have like all of my actual Terraform over here, but it's uploaded into a module and that happens automatically using GitLab CI CD. Um, so this is everything that I need to configure. And when I go to actually pull it, it will go and pull from GitLab. So I can also go and look under my packages, my infrastructure registry, you can see all the versions that I've pushed. Um, so all I have to do to um, to like be able to build a Kubernetes cluster now is just run this. I can pull it from anywhere. It, I can configure it as much as I need, and then I can just run it. And then we also have, so in addition to just building out the cluster, um, there's also a bunch of prep work that we have to do to get it ready to become a base image for a sandbox. Um, and I have that all scripted out in Terraform as well. Um, so there's a variable in here, snapshot. So if I set this to true, then it'll go through and then prepare it for gold images. So what I'm building here will just create the cluster. I can go in and configure it. And then I can then go and do a snapshot and that will like set all the drives correctly, change the networks and that kind of stuff, and then power it off and take the snapshot, um, which is what is used. And I can just use those out of the box on a sandbox. Um, so this is for, uh oh, oh, I know what's wrong with this. Ha ha ha. Uh, when you're going through and fixing that, uh, you got to make sure you reference your folders appropriately. Um, <laughs> the is this actually happening on on reservation, or is this something that's occurring um, uh, behind the scenes before we even have reservations applied? This specific part is happening before it gets to the reservation. Um, we do have okay. things in the works that will happen like at reservation time. Um, but okay. this is for preparing gold images. 
this is the the base images that like so when you say reserve devnet sandbox it will go to rv center and say hey look up these vms and make me a copy of those um, so this is making those gold images that will be copied for the the sandbox reservation and I see, I see you have some Ansible configuration. Are you actually having the Terraform call an Ansible playbook to spin up some things? Yes. So I have, if we look at my actual Terraform script, it's a little bit complicated. Um, we have a lot of stuff in here. So basically what it's doing is it'll pull up the two worker nodes first um, because they need to be like active and ready before the controller goes up. Um, and then on the controller, I have it running an Ansible playbook. Um, so I have in my Ansible playbook, I have different roles. Um, it works across Ubuntu and Terra or Ubuntu and said to us. Um, so it'll create an admission token. There's a node prep. So it'll go through, make sure my packages are installed. The Docker networks are set up correctly. Um, and then this one will run on the controller node to actually install Kubernetes. And then it goes through and joins the workers to the cluster. Um, so yeah, so if we look, I have, so I'm dynamically creating my inventory with just a shell script. There's probably a better way to do that, but that's what it is right now. It's just a shell script. Um, and then I'm executing my playbook um, that will actually create the clusters. You know, when, when we talk about infrastructure as code, this is infrastructure as code. I mean, this is it. This is production level infrastructure as code, people. This isn't yeah. Kareem and I talking about it in flowery uh, language and, you know, conceptually, this is it. This is this is the meat and potatoes, everybody. This is this is my Ansible playbook. So basically I create a token, I prep my nodes and controllers, I install stuff on the controller, and then I have a couple things. So we're installing Calico. There's like a couple prep things for Kubernetes. I don't know. I feel like installing Kubernetes cluster is kind of like a, a very niche thing. Um, but basically, you install your, your CNI and then start your proxies. And then you're ready to go in and join the workers. Um, OK, and it looks like my workers are done. Um, so it's going to start creating the controller now. Yeah, you mentioned it uh, uh, setting up clusters as being a niche thing. But this is really. Um, I, I mean, when you talk about the different levels of needing to deal with uh, working in Kubernetes or dealing with a Kubernetes cluster, um, you know, we tend to approach things from a developer aspect, which is where can I get something spun up really quickly on a local machine? And it abstracts away all of the actual uh, production enterprise level environments that uh, and things that need to be done to actually uh, set up an application it, uh, deployment environment in a real space. Um, and I, I say real, but I mean, you know, somewhere that an organization is uh, managing uh, an environment that is always up and has SLAs and, um, you know, and can have multiple people deploying applications to these clusters and providing these clusters in the same way over and over again. Um, and, uh, you know, that's abstracted in the from the understanding that we usually talk about it because we're just like, well, this is how you spin up K3Ds um, local or K3S locally. And this is how you deploy your Docker container for your, you know, your, for your three node cluster. And this is how they interact with each other. Um, but this is really exciting to see what really goes into, Hey, this is an enterprise level deployment and the things that you have to worry about. I mean, obviously in the 10 minutes we have here, we're not going to be able to fully dig into each individual element. Um, but just understanding the, the, how broad, um, setting these things up actually is at an enterprise level is, is helpful for not just the operations people, but the application developers, developers themselves to understand that this isn't a trivial situation that, that, um, a we're providing for sandboxes, but their operations, right. people are providing to them. The, the Ansible playbook is currently operating now. So we're, we're adding the app repos. It's going to, there's some special stuff you have to do on Ubuntu to like get the daemon for Docker ready. Um, but yeah, so this is going to go through, it's currently prepping all of the nodes for the Kubernetes install. This is great. And Matt said we can't cover it all on 10 minutes. But for me, as somebody that's super interested in this, um, do you have some type of uh, 
front-facing repo that we can share out with our community on like how you wrote this or some cut some type of you know github repo that we can get some some of the code to see what actually happens not so much what's the how the infrastructure is set up on the devnet on the sandbox side but more of the code and the connection to GitLab as well as the Ansible playbook. Is that something that's available? So it's not right now. Um, we have, we host our own GitLab. Um, so we do everything entirely in house. Um, I am the admin for our GitLab server. So I manage all of our runners and stuff for CICD. Um, it's not right now that, I mean, if that's something that people are interested in, I can definitely look at getting that. On oh my God! Yes, everyone, comment below if you're um, interested, and I know that you are. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm also an admin on our GitLab or on our GitHub, the definite GitHub. So I, I can definitely do it. I just haven't done it. Um, I didn't know if people yeah. are interested in this. I think it'll be really useful, Allison. Yeah, because this is now digging yeah, into I the, can... uh, you know, it, it, it intermediate into advanced level, you know, infrastructures code. Usually, we only kind of skim the surface and and. Kind of set the foundation, but this is really tying into everything that we need to start to consider. For you know, you mentioned just now as we were watching this, having to um, adjust some things for Ubuntu uh, appropriately to get the um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, to get the notes to be up and working appropriately. And so, those are considerations that people coming out of the box don't necessarily understand immediately. I say there's one other really cool thing about this that I'm. I'm super happy with, um, and that is that I actually have this uh, CAC pipeline set up so that it will automatically, when I when I push a new tag, it automatically packages and pushes the module to the repo. So I don't actually have to ever do it. Um, I just oh, say, nice. I just come in and say, this is one of the really cool things about GitLab. So this is my last one. You can see my tag was 1.1.2. And it just does everything when I tag. I don't have to ever actually touch this. I just push a tag and then it uploads my module. I don't have to do it. More fun GitLab. That's awesome. It's genius. So it's not just the building and deployment. It's the management and the documentation too as well. Um, very exciting. Eventually. Yeah. I know that we're I know that we're coming up against time, um, and we still have the controller being deployed, um, but uh, that's okay. Um, we can always bring you back to, to follow up if, if you're interested or if our snackers um, want to want to follow up, we'll have you come back and kind of um, expand the conversation. Um, so thank you for joining us today. Um, is this Allison's first time, Kareem? It is Allison's first time. So um, we're going to ask her the, the infamous oh, question. Oh, we get to ask her the question. I don't you know if you even prepped her. I'm going to ask her the question. So, Allison, I don't know if you know this, if you've seen any of our episodes, but we asked our uh, first time guests, uh, you know, if you have to pick one superpower, uh, what would that be? Oh, that's a great question. Putting you on the spot here. I feel like my superpower would be to be a cat. Oh, just be a cat. <laughs> So you oh, oh and it finished see, while we were doing it. So that worked out perfectly. Finished. So you have everything succeeded. If I SSH into this now, you would see it's a fully functional Kubernetes cluster in just about 10 minutes. All of those, you know, setting the infrastructure up, deploying the clusters, deploying the nodes, um, all in one one fell swoop. But unfortunately, we really are are at time. And um, but I just wanted to mention to the snackers out there, uh, if you are attending Cisco Live please uh, join the DevNet Zone and check out Allison. She's going to be talking about Sandbox and demos uh, there, along with all of our workshops and classroom sessions and um, oh, all the fun things we're doing at Cisco Live uh, in Las Vegas, uh, July, or ju not July, June 12th through the 16th. And uh, you can actually watch her live streams um, online as well if you cannot attend. So um, if you want more information, head to developer.cisco.com slash Cisco Live and check out all the fun things that are going to be happening around Cisco Live. Allison, thank you so much for joining us uh, this week. Snackers, thank you for joining us yet again. And Kareem, I'll see you next time, buddy. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Matt.